Virus Total Academy. If you're looking to learn about cybersecurity, you're in the right place. Hello everyone, my name is Evan. I'm an engineer here at Virus Total, and today I'll be giving you guys a brief demo of Virus Total Intelligence. Now before I jump in, I'll give you guys a little bit of background information on myself and some of my experience working in the industry. So before I came here, I worked at NASA Security Operations Center, and in my experience, I found that with the amount of information constantly coming in, it makes it really hard to break the cycle of always being reactive instead of proactive. At NASA, we got millions of alerts every single year, and I get it, people want to break in and find out where the aliens are, um, but we weren't really able to understand who those people were. They could change a little bit of their code and their IP address, and we were essentially back to square one. Now, after coming to Virus Total, I found some ways that we can stop working harder and instead start working smarter. So let's jump into an example so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Today I'll be talking about malware that installs a cryptocurrency miner onto your machine, takes advantage of your hardware and your energy to mine cryptocurrency for the bad guys. Aside from this, certain variants also install a keylogger, so you could have some of the best security in the world and be using a VPN to access your network, but if someone is logging all your keystrokes, then you're doomed. So the variant I'll be talking about today typically arrives in a phishing email, it takes advantage of two different vulnerabilities and eventually downloads a few different payloads and executes the malicious code. So let's say that your SIM flagged a couple of hashes that it found to be suspicious. We're not sure if these are bad, we're not sure if these are related, we just want to find out some more information about them. So first, you can paste them into virus total and see what comes up. As you can see, a few AVs pick these up as malicious. If you're using some that did it, then maybe they did not. But from here, you have a couple of options. You can choose to download the sample and analyze it however you choose. But another option you have is to take a look at Graph. Graph can really help paint a picture of what's going on. If your job is to look into group XYZ that's behind this attack, Graph is a great way to understand the infrastructure, flow, and systems that a particular group is using. Once we have the files in Graph, we can go ahead and get started. As a general note, if a node is red, that means it's been detected as malicious, and if it's black, that means it has not been detected. Here we can see that this file that our sim flagged is part of a zip file that contains a bundle of files. If we expand this, we see a few malicious documents, one of them being an XML document. Now, if you have any suspicion about what you're looking for, you can go ahead and search for it. But if you don't, you can just keep on expanding the relationships and see what you find. Here we see that this is connected to an IP address in some part of Africa. We can also see the IP address's downloaded files. one of which shows a username. Now this could be someone's machine who's been compromised or it could be a pseudonym. We're not really sure at this point. Now as many of you know, VirusTotal was purchased by Google in 2012. Now the intelligence tool is essentially the Google of malware. So we can throw that username into intelligence and see what comes up just as we would with the traditional Google search. As you can see here, there are over 20 results. Most of them have been detected as malicious, but some of them haven't, so these could be worth looking into. If something is getting past your AVs, then we definitely want to take a look at it and find out more information. You can also use search modifiers to only return the specific results you're looking for. So, for example, you can search for results containing this string that have been detected by two or more AVs and are of the portable executable file type. This shows only those results. Let's jump back into Graph and check out some of the other files. As we can see, this IP is hosting 20 domains, all of which are flagged as malicious. You can click on a node and view every single URL that is connected to that IP. What you do with this information is entirely up to you and depends on your motive. Now let's take a look at the intelligence report for our original two files. 
We can see when it was first submitted, when it was last submitted. We can also check out the details tab and view what machine it's targeting, when it was compiled. We can check out the contents of a file. Another interesting thing we can do is check out the AV detections based on the time it was submitted. As you can see here, if the file came onto your system in mid-November, only four AVs would have found it to be malicious and there's a good chance that it could have gotten through to your machine undetected. If you're trying to do some threat intel, this can help you put a timeline together. You can also check out submissions. This shows you the country where the file is being submitted from. You can also take a look at the in the wild information. This shows when the file was first seen along with the file names. Now this can be helpful because it can give you a little bit of an idea of who or what the malware author is trying to impersonate. Lastly, we have the comments section. As you can see, Malware McGee let us know that this file is related to the Zyklon malware family and is being used for cryptocurrency mining. Thank you to Malware McGee. Another cool aspect about the comments section is it allows you to connect with people in the comments by sending them a message. So, if someone else is investigating the same file, you can message them and ask to collaborate or ask a specific question. Now that we've gone over that, let's take a look at the other original file and graph. Now for this one, we weren't able to put any relationship together, but we can still check out the intelligence report and see what we find. Now again, we have a lot of the same information as we did with the last file. For this example, I want to talk about Yara rules. So what are Yara rules? There are millions of files that come into VirusTotal every day, and you can think of a YAR rule as placing a net on the incoming stream of files so that you can catch and be notified about any file that meets the criteria of your YAR rule. So let's say that a malware author always uses the same variable name or always misspells a certain word. You can place this unique information in your YAR rule so that you can be notified as soon as VirusTotal sees a file with this information. So let's take a look at the contents of this file. Now we can pick out any string that we think looks somewhat unique and place it in a YAR rule. Now this string looks somewhat unique, so I'm going to go ahead and place this in a YAR rule and see what comes up. For the purpose of this demo, I've already created the YAR rule as of a couple weeks ago, so I can show you guys what notifications have came in. Go to your notifications. And you can see all of the files that have came in that met the criteria of my YAR rule. As you can see, most of the files here have been detected as malicious, but there's also one that hasn't been detected. Now this could be really interesting because it's getting past the AVs undetected. This is definitely something that I would look into. YAR rules allow you to act on threats that have been exposed to the world, but are not yet on your system. The next thing I want to talk about are retro hunts. Retro hunts are essentially YAR rules on steroids. Instead of putting a net on the incoming stream of files, retro hunts apply a YAR rule to terabytes and terabytes of data in our database. At the time I ran this retro hunt, it scanned over 100 terabytes of data to uncover 354 matching results. This can be useful to identify similar types of attacks and to understand the progression of certain threats. If your YAR rule or retro hunt finds anything interesting, you can analyze the file in graph or whatever method you would like to start taking action. So that wraps up this demo. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions at all, you can go ahead and reach out to VirusTotal. Until next time, take care.